Today we came out to Tech for Africa, a web and emerging technology conference that brings global perspective to the African context. Let's just go through, see who we can find, chat to some of them and bring it all through to you. Gareth Knight, the founder of Tech for Africa is going to tell us about what it is. Gareth, thank you for taking a moment to chat to us. What is Tech for Africa, first of all? Tech for Africa is um, it's about bringing global experience, uh, global knowledge um, and perspective and then applying it in the local context or the African context. And I spoke to you over a year ago about Tech for Africa when you were still planning it. Now it's here. How are people sort of receiving it and seeing it? If I had to compare uh, the, like, the initial kind of reception yes. to where we are now, I think it's been very well received. Um, I think people get it. And it is a technology conference and I know we're lagging behind a bit in terms of developing products for the web, developing products that transcend sort of geekiness toward a more applicable yeah. business notion. Yeah. How is this conference changing that first of all? And the second question is, in that change, are we developing products that are transforming Africa? Um, I think the, the key thing is that through through access to these international speakers and through some of the best speakers locally, we're creating new inspiration and new skills and, and new understandings for people to go out and create things. So that's, I think, the first step. To answer your second part of the question is, is no. I don't think that we're building products yet that are going to change Africa. I think we're starting to, but I haven't seen any groundbreaking products. Perhaps the only one for me that's truly significant is Ushahidi. I'm sure everybody else is asking themselves this question, where are we going from here with Tech for Africa? What's the next step? Uh, we, we want to do quarterly events um, and a, a yearly event, uh, focusing on business, uh, technical stuff, and then entrepreneurs or, or startups. So moving forward, you'll probably find us doing three events a year, three mini events during the year, yes. and then one big event. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot, Gareth. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. That was Gareth Knight, the founder of Tech for Africa and co-founder of Technovated. Stay tuned. We're going to try to find some of the speakers, chat some of the guys who are here and just let you know how it was. As part of Tech for Africa, there was uh, an initiative called Sea Camp Africa, where Tech for Africa is trying to bring investors and entrepreneurs together. Here with me today is Gareth, one of the two entrepreneurs, in fact, out of 10 who qualified. Gareth, thank you for joining us. Pleasure. Nice to, nice to be have the opportunity. What is your business about? First of all, what's the product that you put into Seacamp and what is, what is, what is it about? Uh, the business is called iSigned.com, as in I signed a contract. Yes. And that's literally what we are about. We are about a secure online records management storage. Uh, at a personal level, that's things like your wills, your identity, your... Uh, uh, tax certificates, all of that kind of stuff that you accumulate through your life. And at the yes. business level, it's every contract that you sign from incorporation through to trading through eventual sale or liquidation. It's this place where you can put your important stuff and rest assured that they are they're safe from harm. And that was Gareth Ush from iSigned.com. We're here with Mark Kayigua, one of the delegates at the conference today. Mark, thank you for taking a moment to chat to us. Oh, thanks, man. It's a pleasure. Just to, give us, just to give our viewers a bit of perspective, first of all, how, where are you from? How far did you come for the conference? Um, I came down from Kenya, so yes. that's what, about four or five countries away. How did you find the conference though for the past day and a half? I think it's, it's good to get this global perspective, you know, see how um, international guys view what can work for Africa, but at the end of the day, it's really us who, who are really going to be the ones who um, look at our situation and, and, and solve the problems ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thanks a lot for joining us. We just caught up with um, Eric Hersman, one of the brains behind Ushahidi. He's gonna tell us what Ushahidi is about. Eric, thank you for making a moment to see us. Yeah, it's good to talk to you. Um, so Ushahidi is a crowdsourcing platform yes. uh, used to gather information via SMS, email, web, Twitter, you name it, and put it on a map so you can visualize it easily. Yes. Uh, it's being used all over the world. It started in Kenya after the post-election violence, or in the middle of the post-election violence. Yes. And um, it's now being used in places like Haiti, in uh, Washington, D.C., uh, in 
you know, Pakistan right now. First of all, Ushahidi to me was started as something that was going to change lives. And just to create some context, can you tell us and our viewers why you started Ushahidi and what was the thinking behind it? Yeah, so it was a really hard time, right? I mean, this was uh, the first week of the post-election violence in Kenya. And we weren't thinking about building a product. We weren't thinking about any of that. We were thinking about how can we gather information and stories from ordinary Kenyans and, and make that known to the rest of the world because the everyday media wasn't wasn't saying anything. Uh, you know, they were intimidated a lot. Uh, the normal organizations with power for information weren't sharing it, be they large humanitarian organizations or uh, news media or the government. And then it wasn't until months later that we decided, okay, let's become an organization. Because we were just an ad hoc group of bloggers like yes. yourself and technologists. And um, so it doesn't take special people to, to make things that change the world. It just takes people with a lot of passion and the, the willingness to try. Thank you very much, and yeah, congratulations on what you've developed. Uh, yeah, I hope to see more of you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers, Eric. That was Eric Kersman from Ushahidi. Go check out their site on ushahidi.com. We just saw Clay Shirky walking into the press room, so we're going to try to catch up with him. Well, we managed to catch up with Clay Shirky, the keynote speaker at this conference. Who, who spoke at TED events. He's a global thinker. In fact, he was, um, yeah, he was the keynote speaker today on the last day of the conference. Thank you for making a moment to chat to us, uh, Clay. Thank you, Mungu. It's great to be here. I really enjoyed your talk. One of the things you talked about quite a lot is communication and businesses that started from simple ideas. Would yep. you sort of give us a rundown a bit into that thinking? Sure, the, the observation is that for a lot of the social effects we see on the internet today, whether you're talking about Facebook or Twitter or YouTube, uh, all of them started small yes. but good and had people working on making them bigger yes. rather than starting large and mediocre and having people making them work better. Nothing you do in a social environment ever goes exactly the way the designers want it to, yes. right? People yes. never behave the way you want them to. So you need to start small enough to have a culture of users to, to understand what's good about the service and what's not good and then to change things as you go. It's easier to change little things than big things. Yes. And so a lot of the, a lot of the, both the businesses and just the general social effects we see start with this idea of, I had a cluster of a dozen people who really cared and I grew and grew and grew and grew yes. rather than, you know, I advertised this all over the world and got 10,000 users right away but they didn't really care about each other or my service. Yes. The one last question that I'd like to ask is about your book. In a nutshell, what would you say the book is about and what thinking are you bringing out with the book? Yeah. So the book is called Cognitive Surplus and it's about this idea of cognitive surplus which is to say our time, our, our cumulative free time and talents worldwide represent over a trillion hours a year of things we can commit ourselves to. That, plus now having a medium that can coordinate that kind of action, means we can take on all kinds of challenges and do all kinds of things that we didn't used to be able to do. So the book is partly about just identifying this idea of collective free time as a resource, and it's partly about talking about the ways in which using that collective free time as a resource uh, can make things better. Thank you. Thank you very much Thank for chatting you. to Thank us, Clay. Yeah. And that was NetWeb TV at Tech for Africa, keeping you updated with the latest in business thinking and innovation.